If you want to maximize influence, it isn't about the number of people you can reach. Instead, it's about the quality of the people you have in a small network. Hi, I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. I was talking with someone today about best practices and how to convey and communicate those best practices in a way that's going to massively impact the organization. It's about best practices that are industry-wide and should be in common knowledge, but what we found is they're not necessarily in common knowledge and they're being implemented and adjusted according to the whims of new leadership. My point being is that a peer group would help each of us better understand what works and what doesn't. It'd give us some kind of feedback and a simplified means of communications. So if we have a group of people, such as a peer group or a subject matter expertise group, uh, those individuals can write up one document and use it consistently. It's a sharing of the work. And the person I'm talking with is very excited about the idea. In fact, they came up with the idea. And I think it's a great idea. And they say, well, who do we need to contact? And we, they started going over a list of 10, 15, 20 people. And this was my advice. First off, if you want to maximize your influence, it's not about hundreds of people interacting. I know today it's about getting in front of an audience on social media. It's about having a lot of followers, but that's not how you get results. If you take the time to research any individual who has a high level of influence, you'll very often find that they're not out in the general public. Instead, they have a small inner circle of individuals who they work with to develop a strategy, to cooperate, to share information, to work together for ideas and concepts, and then to document them to make procedures, processes, and controls. These are small groups of individuals, not large organizations. Now, it might feel from a career perspective that it's better to have a large number of people involved, but really what matters is who's the one person who is going to have insights on X, Who's the one person who have insights on Y? Who's the one person who have insights on Z? And if all three X, Y, and Z are in the same realm of information, bringing that small group of four or five people together is always more powerful from a leadership perspective, from a a process perspective, and from getting things off the ground. Unfortunately, in our society, we have a lot of uh, movements that have a lot of push behind them and of rallies and fundraising, and then suddenly nothing happens. And this is because in the public world, if you're fundraising, if that's your goal, then yes, you need a lot of people. But if your objective is leadership, influence, change, then you can start with three or four people. Each of those three or four people reach three or four more people, and it goes on and on and on. You don't need centralized management. In fact, in most market systems, small clusters of individuals working towards a common objective get better results than a large uh, single organization moving towards the same result. And the reason why this happens is because you have more variables tested and more best practices documented than if you had a top-down approach where there's still a small leadership group. I I want you to look at organizations. I did a report for a client, and and clients over the years have used it. It's how to build inner circle relationships. And what you'll notice in every organization of any size, there's always the group at the top, the 1%. There's always a group at the top, the 5%. There's always a group at the top, the 10%. It doesn't matter if the organization is 100 people or 10 people, there's always someone in charge, and there's always a small group of people who do. You'll see this in your church activities. You'll see this in your trade association activities. You'll see this in your Toastmasters club. There's always a small group of people who do, and then many of those people who don't. When you look at psychology and sociology, most influential people have no more than 150 contacts. We tend to have a small tribal approach to the way we handle day-to-day life. But those who are on the top of the of the peak as far as performance, outcomes, and results, they tend to have a small advisory team of three to five individuals. Their management team might be five to seven individuals. Their leadership, middle managers, might be seven to 12 individuals. And then from there, they can manage thousands of outcomes, thousands of individuals. If you start immediately with a team of 500, you're going to be in committee all the time. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have all these little factions spinning off. Those factions are not a failure 
in bringing the group together. It is a function of human interaction. So again, if you want influence, if you want strength in in numbers, it starts out with a small group. As far far as the work I've done in the past, consultancy-wise, I've seen teams of two or three individuals uh, start out, get the foundation laid out, get the guidelines laid out, they put together the bylaws, and next thing you know, they've got 70 people on the team, 100 people on the team. And because they were able to build the foundation with a core group of focused individuals, they were able to get the results with the larger organization. Now, I know when you look at that large organization, you're thinking, well, you know, if I just had 50 people on a team, I could get five people doing this and five people doing that, and I'm going to be the central hub, and I'm going to make this happen. No, your day is going to be ruined because if each of those people only spend 10 minutes interacting with you, your whole day is just burned. Start with a small group. It's okay to be understaffed. In the case of subject matter expertise, three to four people putting together a white paper is infinitely better than 10 people putting together a white paper. Uh, You can always have three or four people put the paper together and have 10 people review it or 100 people review it. But again, it's that central group. But when you're working on that document, one person's doing the editing. Small groups can make a massive change in difference. I wrote another program for clients a a while back. I had a number of private clients and the program was called the Magic Principle of 1%. If you can incrementally improve the activity 1% per day, so you've got an idea, you form a small group, well, that's a a percentage increase right there. The small group works together and gets a deliverable. Now you take the deliverable and you put it in front of a review group to get feedback. The feedback comes back, the initial group improves the product, you put it out again. It also falls along the line of minimal viable product. Again, you don't need a small, you don't need a big group to make big results. A small group can create big results when you have the focus, the intention, the clear charter or plan, and ultimately the outcomes mapped out in advance as deliverables. Now, yes, there will be times where you want to add additional people, but you want to think about a business dilution. If you have a small team of shareholders, say there's five shareholders that each own 20% of the company. To go from 5 shareholders to 100 shareholders, you're going to have to dilute the ownership or concentrate ownership in a few people. So if 5 people can't get the job started, then having 2 people in charge and 100 people on the team isn't going to get any better. Uh, You can always hire contractors, maintain the the ownership in the central group, uh, hire contractors, uh, hire temporary services, bring on people as necessary in a different category, but ultimately it's going to be a small group. Now, whether it's democracy, where everybody's talking about everybody votes, or it's communism, where you have a committee that votes, or it's a, 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 an oligarchy or a dictatorship, there's always a small group of three to five individuals that run most of the show. Now, again, I, I touched on this earlier. There could be, in a particular topic area, if we're talking about countries, there could be three to five individuals that run the Northeast. There could be three to five individuals that run a state. There could be three to five individuals that master an industry. That's the most stable environment. But to get any of this started, it's not how big can we build this team. It's not, let's find 100 people. It is simply three to five individuals sit down, come up with a plan, outline the objectives. If those three to five individuals cannot agree or produce basic deliverables, which is the minimum viable product, then you're not going to get it done with 20 people. So that's my take today. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. You can gain influence and power, develop and grow and create opportunities, make changes with small teams to start. That's where you start. And once you do this, you can build upon it to create and keep profitable customers and transform business relationships. If you have any questions about what I've covered today, visit me at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. And while I'm not really paying attention to subscriber counts, I don't want you to miss out on this unique and valuable resource for high-income professionals, entrepreneurs, and managers um, that is Inside Strategic Relations. So subscribe here, but make sure you visit www.insidestrategicrelations to ask your questions. There's a huge opportunity here for you to, to be the leader you want to be, to get the results that you're looking for, 
and to transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. Thanks for listening.